Here's a real question from a real dude buying a real vehicle right now. The guts of it is Pajero Sport comes in two-wheel drive and all-wheel drive versions. It costs five grand more for the all-wheel drive. Is it worth it? Details next. I'm Tony Logan from Auto Expert. And I get new cars cheap. The buyers here in Australia. Even Pajero Sports, oddly enough. And if you'd like to do that, website, card. And with the formalities thus out of the way, here is that real question from a real dude named Greg Marshall, who says... <coughs> I have ordered a Pajero Sport GLX two-wheel drive five-seater, like the base model, but I've been reading comments the two-wheel drive model is quite dangerous if driving on wet roads. Mm. This vehicle suits us, apparently, as we need it to tow our 2,000 kilo caravan and as we will not be doing any off-road driving, so this model seems quite suitable. I would greatly appreciate your comments because I've been watching your YouTube videos lately and I found them to be extremely helpful. Well, thank you, Greg, for those kind words. I'll try to do whatever I can to help you. And look, if you're watching this video and you're in the market for a vehicle right now, any vehicle, Pajero Sport or not, one of the best pieces of advice I could possibly give you, and plenty of people, I estimate about a third of people in the market right now buying a car, they don't do it this way, and they really should. It's a two-step process. It's research buy okay research decide a lot of people go a little bit of research decision a lot of research afterwards because you're in a queue there's a waiting period and what else are you going to do dude okay so this is a huge mistake always extensive research first you do the research you get all of the knowledge programmed in and then you can make the right decision then you just go for it and wait Look at online, P-O-R-N, or whatever, dude. But just don't do the research after you decide. So there's that. Now, I'd suggest that the difference in price between a two-wheel drive, like a rear-wheel drive Pajero Sport, and the all-wheel drive version is five grand, which is a considerable sum. Like in GLX land, I think it's like 45 grand versus 50. So that's like 11% more for the all-wheel drive one. And it's not a rip-off because when you've got the all-wheel drive one, they've got to have a whole front drive system. So that's like drive shafts and CV joints and a front prop shaft and a transfer case with a lockable centre diff, which Mitsubishi calls Super Select 2, and a low-range gear set as well for severe off-road driving. Okay, so that is a lot of hardware and packaging it up for five grand, that's reasonable value. The other thing is... It's better, and you've got to expect it to be better. The party trick, of course, with this system, apart from the off-road ability that you get because of the low-range reduction gearing, apart from that, okay, the party trick is being able to drive on a high-traction surface in all-wheel drive. So you can engage four-wheel drive, and as long as you select the mode that has the centre diff unlocked the front and the rear prop shafts can spin at different rates which they need to do on a high traction surface when you sort of go around a corner because the front end and the rear end are going through different radii and therefore they're traveling different distances and that means the shafts have to turn at slightly different speeds hence the differential if the differential is unlocked you can drive like that all day long at any speed you want practically in all-wheel drive, okay? No problem. If you try that in a more agricultural vehicle with a less sophisticated four-wheel drive system, such as a Hilux, for example, you're going to put the transmission, like the centre uh, transfer case is going to be under a lot of stress because those shafts are going to want to drive at different rates and they're not going to be able to because they're locked. This phenomenon is called transmission wind-up and it breaks things, okay? So this is a real plus with 
Triton, like high specs of Triton and all-wheel drive versions of Pajero Sport because you get the heavy tow capacity and the severe all-terrain off-road ability, but you also get that SUV-like all-wheel drive mode, which is a real plus because even if the bitumen road that you're on is wet, you should not engage four-wheel drive in a more agricultural vehicle like a Hilux or a BT50 or something of that nature, okay? And the same goes for a good dirt road with high levels of traction, okay? Being in four-wheel drive in conditions like that, you run the risk of breaking something, okay? And you pay the five grand, you get that greater level of sophistication and it would want to give you a benefit. The benefit being more sure-footed transportation in these marginal traction conditions like wet bitumen and dirt roads and things of that nature, okay? So it's not so much a fact that the two-wheel drive Pajero Sport is dangerous. It's just that the all-wheel drive version is better if you en invoke that system in those marginal conditions. So as long as you're smart enough to spin the dial when it's wet in your all-wheel drive version, then that's going to be a benefit to you. And the final thing I'd say on all of this, okay, is that all vehicles have limits, these vehicles are not sports cars, for example, right? So when you're driving an SUV in marginal traction conditions, you need to drive to the conditions. And part of the appropriate travel speed equation that you should be running in your head continuously whenever you drive a vehicle is what's the capability of the vehicle? What are my capabilities as a driver? And what sort of conditions is the world throwing at me right now? And if you balance all these things up, your transportation will be safe, okay? That's really important. Now, if you're in the two-wheel drive version, like the cheapy, then your travel speed in some conditions is going to be lower for safety than the travel speed that you might be able to exploit in the higher spec vehicle with the all-wheel drive system. So it might be a matter of five or 10 k's an hour or an ability to get on the gas a little bit heavier on the way out of a bend when you've got all-wheel drive helping you. But it doesn't mean that the two-wheel drive one is unsafe. It just means that it's less capable. And to put this in perspective, there's no outcry of people saying that Hilux is just unsafe in the wet because hey it's got the same sort of drive system as the two-wheel drive Pajero Sport and the low spec versions of Triton. It's two-wheel drive on basically all made surfaces with reasonably high traction and most utes are this way so I'd suggest the Pajero Sport is a little more sophisticated than that because Mitsubishi jams in an eight-speed transmission and a coil-sprung rear end as well, which basically improves the relatively you know, unladen ride quality of these things. So it's not dangerous. It's just that the all-wheel drive one is better and the responsibility on you, irrespective of the model you select ultimately, is you've got to run that kooky equation the whole time. If your hands are on the wheel, you are responsible for this. What are the conditions? How capable am I? How capable is the vehicle? Let's stay inside the envelope for the sake of ourselves, the other people in the vehicle, and everyone else out there on the road, including the poor bastards who have to come and pick up the pieces if it all comes horribly unglued for you because you're not cognizant of running this equation the whole time when you drive.